So again, I mean, you've, you're going to you're going to hear me too much. You're going to get tired of me by like day, probably the end of the day, not even day two. Um, so we're kind of kicking off, of course, kind of like a Nick's keynote. I think just tell you guys what's been going on, all the changes. I'm sure you're following the discourse, the Twitters, the everything that we post on. But uh, just give you a quick run through, have some questions, and and kind of kick off the event in that way. Um, we can go to the next slide, I think. Uh, real quick, so this time I'm actually naming the organizers, and I'm going to embarrass them, but like Ryan, who's right there, you just saw him, Alexander, who's behind the curtain, uh, Mateus, I, right there, thank you for raising your hand. If you can raise your hand, just like really, you guys deserve it, so like Brian, Gabe, Nick, Jonas, Jacqueline, Rock, uh, I actually, I, I'm not sure of the full name, right, this is like a Nick's problem, so I know their handle, CTEM. If you're here, I appreciate everything that you've done. Okay, and of course, Julian, uh, beyond the organizer team, over 30 in, like volunteers helped pick up things. I think we had a little like French, I don't know if it's French, actually that's not probably the right thing to say, but uh, they left the tables outside and 30 tables we like folks carried in yesterday, so thank you guys. Um, and again, it's gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, just to prove that this is a proof of work concept here, this is Ron and this is Ilko. So that's us. Yeah. Yeah. And again, super appreciative of all of our sponsors. All right. Can you hear me? I think so. All right. Uh, so in this talk, we'll uh, give a bit of an uh, overview of what's uh, happening with uh, sort of the Nix project in a broader sense, uh, as because the Nix project is already quite old, but it keeps evolving in big ways. Uh, so uh, we're making some, or we want to make some big changes with uh, how the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the project uh, is, is organized uh, so that it uh, functions better. Oh, it's only if things get very loud. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like I said, so Nix is already uh, a very old project, so it got started in 2003, um, and at the time it was basically an, an academic project, so for something like the first 10 years or so, it was mostly a vehicle for writing research papers, uh, and then a scary thing happened, uh, people actually started using it in the real world, um, and uh, yeah, we got uh, um, contributors, and uh, we got a, an, a community. Uh, and so around, I think in 2013, we had the very first uh, yeah, Nix developer uh, sprint in uh, Slovenia. Uh, I think that was about 15 people, and actually most of them were Plone developers. Uh, so we sort of uh, uh, hijacked their meeting. Uh, so it was a very nice scenery, uh, uh, very sunny. So. Uh, should go back there, but I don't think uh, 200 people will fit in this uh, in this farm. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the community has uh, has grown a lot. We have uh, a huge number of people. Um, in fact, uh, some other uh, statistics uh, that show that the community keeps growing. Uh, so these are the last five NixOS releases, and every release we had more contributors and more commits, except for 2105, that actually had a record number of contributors. But that one also had a two months longer release period. So I've, I think that's the reason. Uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's to the moon. It's only going up. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's a really growing uh, open source community, but now we're kind of getting into uh, 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 yeah, a new stage where uh, people start using it more and more in, in the commercial context, and uh, there are a, a number of uh, uh, VC-backed startups, and we have consultancy companies, and we have yeah, very large companies using Nix. Um, just to give a few more uh, examples of how the community is growing, uh, these are uh, uh, for people who care about that sort of thing, uh, the number of stars on GitHub <laughs> just grown by, what is it, 50% in the last year or so. Uh, I will actually add that what's interesting in this one is that this took us quite a few years, right? So, oops, sorry, I think I'm probably on the wrong side. This took us 
quite a few years to reach the, the initial 6,000. And then just in one year, we increased it by 50%. And I think in the last four months, that has been further increased by, I think, almost 1,000 something. So I know it's like a vanity metric, but again, like a lot of uh, engineers, right, in the world kind of view it as something that goes on. Yeah, uh, so Google Trends for Nix packages. Uh, I never trust Google Trends, but that's a separate thing. Uh, <laughs> or uh, this is our binary cache traffic over the last two years, so since the last NixCon. So it has grown from about 10 terabytes of traffic a day to 50 terabytes. Um, so yeah, sort of a 5x in the last two years. Um, of course, uh, firing up a, a 10,000 uh, uh, spot instances that all uh, copy some closure from the binary cache to do something. Huh? Uh, but I mean, those are still uh, 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 real uh, world use cases. So, um, but yeah. Uh, uh, here's another interesting metric. Uh, so we wrote a little script to uh, kind of mine GitHub to see how many projects there are with a default.nix or a flake.nix or a shell.nix. Uh, so right now there are something like 2,900 projects with a default.nix, 2,000 with a flake.nix. So it's a, a big adoption of an experimental feature. Uh, and that's actually... <laughs> That's uh, a topic we'll discuss later. But we'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> and that's up from 1,700 in the last two months. So uh, if we plot this trajectory, then uh, uh, it's going to take over. There's still uh, more projects with a shell.nix. Uh, but uh, yeah, so... Uh, we're, re we're replacing containers in about six to seven months. If exactly. People want to we'll reach there. the singularity. Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, so uh, so that's all great, lots of users, lots of contributors, uh, but if you, for example, I uh, bring up that uh, Nix is too hard to use, that uh, had they find the language too hard, or maybe it's not actually language, but uh, sort of all the Nix packages, idioms you need to know. So. And there is a pretty steep learning curve with, uh, with Nix and NixOS. Uh, the, the documentation isn't perfect. Uh, had, uh, the, the command line interface isn't perfect. So had, uh, yeah, there, there are barriers to entry. So uh, if you really want world domination, then uh, there's uh, still quite a bit that can be improved. Uh, but of course, uh, as users, uh, or as the people who, who made it, it's, it's uh, dangerous to sort of speculate about what sort of problems we had. So uh, that's why um, uh, Ron and a couple of other people uh, organized a survey. I want to talk yeah. about it. So, so I think a lot of you saw the Nick survey. Um, I think co continuing kind of Vilko's mention of how we're expanding things, right? We're growing the, we ran a survey at the beginning of the year. The whole concept behind the survey was that we've started to grow to a certain extent that we needed to have a more, let's call it, a normal way of communicating with all of the users, right? And understanding what their pain points are, how we can improve it for them rather than just assuming or theorizing or theoretically. Um, really, the method here was that <clears throat> percent of their communities to actually respond to it. So I'm not sure this is biased because a lot of our, the Nix folks are very excited about Nix, but that's a lot. Um, took us about 80 hours to review. That was fun. And I think the key takeaways that, of course, came from it, and I think to a lot of people in this room, this is not going to be super surprising, but it's something that we can say it's backed with some data, was exactly like number one was lowering the barriers into Nix. I think we've talked about this a lot, and we will continue to talk about this, but a lot of people have friction while trying to ramp up into Nix. I think this problem is becoming bigger as our, 
as our general curve of new users grow and leans towards that. So just in the last survey, 30% of the respondents actually joined Nix or started using Nix in the last 12 months. Um, and again, as we kind of grow, a lot of that community is going to change, and we'll also talk about that later, and we need to make sure that we're able to embrace that. Uh, documentation. So going to touch on it real quick. It's a big topic, and I think there's going to be a great talk about it. But the three key points that came out was onboarding, was about can we just have one place there is a documentation team now so they're going to talk about it a lot more than i can uh, better debugging and error messaging i think this ties back to making nix more accessible right a lot of users when something fails they need a better way of actually understanding how that works and what they need to do in order to fix it and then uh, contributing to nix so this was an interesting one and this is more about embracing newcomers a lot of respondents actually came back and said that they didn't feel empowered didn't have the confidence to actually contribute back into Nix. Um, so I think you know, building mechanisms that help embrace them and kind of give others the confidence to go about and suggest contributions and be part of it is, is gonna be critical in the years and months to come. And really reproducibility is the way, like when people were asked why Nix reproducibility, um, I have an interesting thought on that because I think a lot of people actually don't understand reproducibility, probably not in this room, but in general. Um, next steps for the survey. So this is part of our mechanism of kind of growing and, and setting Nix up for success. We plan to do it on a yearly basis. So hopefully next year, everyone here can participate, suggest questions, improve it, and make sure that we're asking the right things. And then of course, help us get all the feedback in. Nix Foundation. So again, part of growing is we did a lot of things, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of things happen with the Nix Foundation, and Ilka is kind of going to take that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, that, that reads Nix Foundation. That It's called the NixOS Foundation, uh, which, by the way, is always a bit of a problem what we should name ourselves. Uh, is it the Nix Project? or? Uh, but that's another discussion. Uh, so it's called the NixOS Foundation. Uh, and so part of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Growing the project is, uh, we feel, was uh, is professionalizing the foundation a bit uh, because uh, so the Nixos Foundation has existed since I think 2015 or so, uh, but it hasn't really done all that much. Uh, so it runs some infrastructure, uh, it collects donations to uh, ensure that we have some continuity in in case the current sponsor of, for instance, the binary cash were to stop sponsoring because the binary cash costs. I don't know, had 10,000 euros or so a month. Uh, uh, so that's very graciously sponsored. Uh, but if that were to be disappear, then uh, have we have to make sure that uh, the whole project doesn't <laughs> stop working right away. Uh, so that was sort of what the foundation did. But uh, what the foundation didn't do was do any sort of uh, technical leadership. Uh, so it didn't create roadmaps or set goals or uh, hire developers to work on things. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we want to uh, expand what the uh, foundation does. Uh, so to give more active to support to the community. Uh, so to do that, we first uh, had a sort of process where we, uh, we, we talked to other uh, <laughs> where we talked to other projects, uh, like uh, the Rust Foundation. Exit is that way. <laughs> so I'll remind you guys. So we talked to the, had the Rust Foundation and the Haskell Foundation and a couple of others had to learn from what worked well for them and what didn't. Um, yeah, and, and so we sort of made a plan to, uh, to uh, expand what the foundation does. Uh, first step for that is that we needed to expand the board of the foundation. So previously the foundation was three people, uh, all of whom had limited time to work on that. So uh, uh, that wasn't ideal. Um, so we decided to uh, expand the board to uh, five people that are uh, have representative of uh, some of the biggest contributors uh, to the Nix project. Um, 
yeah, and we started thinking about um, uh, how we can uh, run the project in a better way. So historically, uh, we've had a lot of, uh, the whole project has been kind of haphazardly organized. And so you had people with various responsibilities like SA uh, running the infrastructure. So there are a couple of people who know how to log into certain machines when something breaks, but uh, who exactly knows what to do? Uh, uh, Nobody knows, uh, and uh, or, or say uh, the Nix project. So had the Nix repository itself. So the Nix tool, uh, basically, uh, yeah, there was no Nix team. Uh, so basically, it ultimately came down to me to decide what goes in, uh, and that's a bit of a bottleneck and a bus factor. And so now we've established a a Nix team, um, and uh, uh, had the goal is for uh, all these sort of crucial teams to have roadmaps and uh, be reachable and so on. And uh, I th think you've seen a discourse post about that. Um, do you want to say something about the Fremont ban? No, I think we'll, we'll touch a lot of it in the board panel. You guys can ask questions. Um, really, this is, again, part of the trajectory of, of us being able to grow, right? Like, I think you all know other open source communities and how they're able to kind of build structure, but also set the project and the community up for success. At the end of the day, the board is here to serve the project and the community, and the community is here to serve the project. So it's like a little arrow thing, but the board is really here to serve you guys. Um, so just building up more mechanisms that we can do that in the right way, being intentional about it, and less ad hoc. Cool. So a little bit about, again, continuing about, uh, uh, about the topic, right? It's like Nick's vision. What does that even mean? Do we have a Nick's vision? Where is Nick's going kind of in the long term? I think, oops, okay. I think that in no way the board is dictating anything. This is completely, you know, everyone has the freedom to choose what to work on and that's the whole power of the community. What is kind of helpful here is that we are taking a lot of our time and putting in a lot of effort to try and collect the make macro view of it, right? So kind of be helpful and kind of give the direction that we're assuming the industry that, that Nick should go in order to really step up and go to the next level. Um, again, some of them might be very obvious and we don't want to dig too deep into them. We can later on, but first concept in terms of the vision is we all want to see Nick's everywhere, right? So having that as part of the vision might seem obvious, but Writing it down means that we're tying back the different efforts that we're trying to do and seeing how it ties back to actually reaching that vision or that goal. Um, so we have, we have listed like a few things that we kind of believe in from the feedback, from the surveys, from just everyone's different perspective. Um, <clears throat> you know, having it as a universal build con and configuration tool, um, hoping that every project can have a flake.nix in it, and going in that direction and what that means, and I'm sure all of you have a lot of questions on that, and that the principles of Nix itself are understood, right? Like, I have to admit, when I go out of this room and I talk to engineers about Nix, most of them don't know, and then, like, that's the kind of point I, I made about reproducibility. A lot of them really don't fully understand why it's valuable. So a lot of the principles that Nix is bringing, I think it, we're trying to achieve that as part of the vision. And of course, good user experience. This is actually a very ambiguous one. It means a lot of things, but again, it ties back to allowing people to more easily come on into Nix, use Nix, error message, like all of those areas. Um, and the last thing is we need more input. So, you know, we're two guys on stage. The board is like five people, uh, but the community again is, is our power. So you're all out there. You all know much more than we do. So like, Feeding that back in is going to really Im impact how we go from here. Anything you want to add on vision? No. Cool. Next roadmap. So vision kind of leads into, okay, then what the heck do we want to try and do? And this is the next roadmap. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I already mentioned roadmap. So uh, and here again, it's a bit ambiguous what word Nix means, but here I'm referring to sort of a roadmap for the entire project. Yeah, so what should be sort of the, the, the goals for, uh, well, for, <laughs> yeah, for everything. Um, and so, yeah, we also want roadmaps for sub-projects, but so kind of the big ones we have in mind, but again, uh, we need your input, is 
have this uh, yeah, empowering team, so making sure that all the teams are well defined and they have, uh, how you know who's in a team and what their uh, responsibilities and mandates are. Uh, so that's sort of an organizational thing. Then on a technical level, we really need to stabilize flakes uh, because, uh, yeah, we're currently in an embarrassing situation where everybody is using them, but they're officially uh, experimental. Uh, likewise, the new CLI is also something that uh, uh, a lot of people are using, but uh, it's also still experimental. Uh, so we should stabilize those things, get, I call it Nix 3.0, and uh, then we can move on to uh, uh, some other uh, technical issues. Uh, obviously improving the documentation, so we now have a documentation team since a couple of months. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, there are big things happening there. And another thing that frequently comes up is the, uh, the Nix installation experience. Uh, that's uh, often a source of uh, random failures. Uh, and so that's not a very sexy topic, but it is the sort of thing that uh, makes people immediately not use Nix. So uh, we need to uh, improve that. But again, uh, we need your input on what what should be on the roadmap. And so the idea for the roadmap is that that's sort of uh, like the Rust roadmap kind of idea of what we want to accomplish over the, the next year. Uh, so it, it should be uh, attainable goals, uh, whereas the vision statement that can be, uh, uh, there we can go crazy, uh, but uh, this, this should be uh, realistic. All right, I think that's it. Yeah, and again, that's, that's it for that. We'll go into a few questions if Brian can look me in the eye and tell me how much time we went over. But uh, we're, okay, perfect, thank you. Um, again, thank you to the organizers. Thank you to all the volunteers, the sponsors. I mean, pulling this off is amazing and hopefully next year it can be even bigger and, and greater. But yeah, we'll do some questions and then we'll jump over to, to the next talk. So feel free to raise your hand. Brian's gonna run at you, throw a mic. I'm not gonna throw the mic. <laughs> if it was a cushion, I would, but it's a steel box, so no. Any questions? Um, has the board considered the current uh, supply chain security craze and how we can ride that wave? Because Nick solves a lot of the problems there and people are reinventing the wheel. I didn't quite catch if um, if uh, the board has thought about the the whole security salsa security supply chain software supply chain s bomb and how Nick solves it potentially riding that wave, uh, exactly. I'll quickly partially respond and then okay, you can probably add on. I think that's a perfect like just a perfect example of how the community can come in and bring things up, right? Like we're we're trying our best, but these are things that if you come in and you're like, hey, you know, there's this thing that we can ride. Sorry for my French, but let's fucking do it, right? Um, I think you're completely right. Nix inherently solves salsa. I've seen numerous startups raise a lot of money solving salsa with containers and all of these scanners and cool ways, but Nix kind of solves it by construction. And this, this is just one example of, of riding a wave. I think before I send it off to you, right? Uh, stable diffusion. I think uh, there's a few in the crowd here. I saw some really cool Nix blogs about stable diffusion and how you can just spin it up with Nix. There are startups now that are enterprising stable diffusion. You can actually make, and we obviously know that, just it accessible via Nix without a problem. So um, bluntly, no, we haven't thought about it, but I think that's, that's a really good point. Uh, I, I, I think we have sort of thought about these things, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not on the roadmap. But Yes, Nix is, is really unique in that it gives us the entire dependency graph of a, of a system. So you can do all these analysis like uh, um, you know, what secu security vulnerabilities are in my closure or what, are the licenses okay or uh, yeah, uh, what actually went into my, uh, into my stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of really cool stuff we can do with that. And one more thing, marketing team, right? Uh, we're gonna also talk about a bit team empowerment, I think tomorrow, and you, maybe you've seen a post that we made. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna step away. The, like, hopefully that's, those are things that can be on the marketing team roadmap. And 
if people are excited about it. That'd be cool. We have one more question over here. Um, thank you. So uh, it's great that you're talking about the marketing team because that was exactly my point. Um, there was I, I heard about efforts for making Nix like uh, more um, accessible, for instance, uh, showing it more to the public, to people who don't know about it. Um, and some of my questions were like, is it still an ongoing effort? Is it still a priority? Uh, how do you see that in the future? Uh, has some stuff part of it? I, I think part of it was, for instance, taking care of the website, but I guess it's also part of the documentation because onboarding is also something part of it. So like, how do you see that evolving? Yeah, so I think that's really important. In fact, uh, so we we had here had the long-term goals. Uh, uh, so quite apart from marketing, Nix itself, uh, there's the whole bit about principles widely understood. Uh, so people need to understand why, for example, declarative, reproducible infrastructure is important, and a lot of people don't. Uh, so that's uh, really a job for the marketing team. Um, and uh, yeah, so that remains very important. So uh, I'll also add on that, it's completely right. I'm gonna give a sneak peek. I'm gonna talk about this a bit tomorrow in terms of team empowerment. And there was that post. I'm gonna say something that I want pushback for. I think that if we had a definition of what a critical team is, I think marketing is in that definition just like in front other teams. So I think that the marketing team goes beyond owning the website. It's the positioning, it's the messaging of Nix. It's when someone comes and like looks at Nix, they get a one liner and they un like, it helps them understand. I think we're not there yet in terms of just like one line to understand Nix. Um, but it's like in my eyes, it's the high, it's one of the highest priorities because otherwise what, you know, what are people understanding? Other questions or we're good? Cutting. All right. Thank you everybody.